Hello guys and welcome to this new video. This video will be exciting because we will be building a surface base and shoot it to the Mon. So it will be one of the earlier Mon bases in KSP2. I mean there have been a bunch but I haven't really seen a lot of Mon bases in this size. So this would, would be pretty exciting combined with the fact that we will launch it in one launch on one rocket. Which has to do with me not wanting to have unnecessary amount of bugs in this game. I mean, if you want to dock stuff together, stuff box around it, I just thought I will just build it in one piece, shoot it up, I don't have to worry about anything. So yeah, this here took a really large rocket. So you can imagine this mission being pretty complicated because we have to build the surface base all in one piece and put it on a big rocket. So combine this with the wobbly rockets and buggy rockets we have in KSP2 and you get a difficult mission, but I got it somehow. First I designed a completely different surface base, uh, but yeah, it just exploded on a pad, I couldn't really do anything. But else than that, this surface base has a really funny name, it's called the Monor Analysis and Research Vehicle for Inspection, or Marvin for short, which is a really cool shortcut. And you might think, wow, you're really smart for coming up with, with that. I didn't come up with that, uh, Senov KSP came up with that. Thank you for that. It is a cool name. Because I just wanted to call it Mon Research Facility or something boring. And this really gives it a special touch. Else than that, you will also see Valentina Kerman doing a dance for us at the end of the video. <laughs> yeah, she did a dance on the Mon, because why not? But yeah, in the background you can see how we constructed this whole base. The base itself is pretty self-explanatory and now we're building the landing system which is hugely over-engineered but uh, I just wanted to be sure in case P2 you never know with all the bugs and stuff. I just wanted to be safe that I can land this with enough delta V. Now what you don't see in the building time lapse is that I added a fuel line because I added this later and this segment wasn't recorded sadly but just imagine there being a fuel line between the tank and the engine. And on top I also added four SRBs just to slow ourselves down. I mean, SRBs are pretty pretty dumb and powerful, so you can use them to slow down. But with that, the surface base is almost complete. Now, I won't show the construction of the rocket uh, because it's about the base, the video, right? You will see the rocket, it's pretty boring. But yeah, I adapt, I, I also built in some adapters so we can expand the base further in the future. But first, let's get to the launch. And here we are blasting off the pad, the power of those five Mammoth 2 engines really shows. The TWR is really high, but it's also a pretty big rocket. You can also see that it really doesn't like to fly anything straight, it just wants to tip over. Even though I added those huge fins, those, con those control fins, this could be a little tip for you. If you want to stabilize a rocket, use control surfaces. Not a stabilizer, but control surfaces. They, they will bring more benefit. You can see the whole control surface uh, is like flipping around and not just, uh, not just one part of it. But yeah, further than that, we are aiming for a pretty high apoapsis of about 160 kilometers because uh, yeah, we, we really had to delay our gravity turn with this rocket here because of the stability issue. So I really wanted to get out of the atmosphere fast and that was the best way. But now, stage decoupling. The four side boosters are decoupled, which worked first try, which I was astonished. And then the first stage or one and a half stage, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, can burn a bit further. And this here is a three stage or with the booster four stage rocket. So. The first stage together with the booster just brings it up a bit into space and the second one should get it into orbit and the third one should get it to the moon. So it's basically like the Saturn V with three stage rocket only that um, yeah, this is a bit more powerful. We can actually get to the moon with the second stage. But here we run out of fuel in the first stage. We decouple it and now we are in an orbit. We have reached orbit. We are safe for now. Nothing can go Wrong here, we can't really crash into anything. So now, planning a maneuver to the Mon 
And it's so nice that you can actually see where you are going now after the last update. Now I've chosen to go somewhat equatorial just to be a little bit efficient but you can see I don't really fly efficient in this mission because uh, yeah I packed so much fuel in it. But yeah then we can start burning towards the moon. Here we go. So we also have the stage deployment in this burn which made it a little bit more complicated and what also complicated it further was that my third stage was actually a little bit offset like the center of thrust was a little bit offset the center of mass of the base which was really hard to eyeball in the in the VIP so we could solve the situation now this is a tip for you if you ever run into the situation you can just time warp while burning and it will just stop the rotation at all you can see the tip being employed later but here beautiful shot a sun set and the sunrise in the same shot sunset and here it is again yeah we're on our way to the moon the first surface base will be will be deployed soon here a little correctional maneuver you can see our uh, on the nav ball how the rocket wants to tip away but we just time warped so that's a really helpful tip if you ever Get into the situation where your center of thrust is a bit misaligned. Either you can like build the ship correctly, which is for like noobs, or you can just exploit game mechanics and fix your own mistakes like that, like I do. So uh, yeah, not really the best <laughs> thing ever. But here, capturing around the mon, and we are already captured. So then it came to the task of choosing a landing site and I wanted to have a cool looking landing site where we have a, a lake, like one of those dark mon lakes, as well as one of the light grey surfaces and I thought I found a pretty good spot there. I mean it has a bit of everything, it has a crater, it has a lake, it has the, the light grey and the dark grey surface so everything's fine. But yeah then we will decelerate with our third stage using time warp of course because it would just freak out and here we have a curb in rise isn't that beautiful i really like that was the second criteria for the landing site you have to see curb in the distance just because it's cool you know i mean theoretically to have a comnet connection but we don't need this anyway then we are on a crash course we can separate the third stage and now work our way down with our base now the landing of the base surprisingly went really really well, it worked out first try, I, the uh, sorry, bees worked and those oddly shaped tanks uh, also pretty uh, worked pretty well. So there you can see the landing site, we have a little crater inside the dark grey area, I, I really like this landing site. But yeah here, SRBs just to slow ourselves down, really um, dumb but it works, so stage away. And now it, the real challenge comes to do a powered landing using those uh, side mounted tanks. The problem is, if we stage away those side mounted tanks, we don't have fuel. So we need to deploy them at the point where we can still fall down without crashing, but not too late because the tanks will just lay there forever. Like my plan was to explode them, but here we are. We are getting closer to the surface. It's getting the tension rises. The tanks are depleting. Can we make it? I didn't want to land on such a stone because, yeah, well, we, we would die probably, even though they don't have collision. And I watched out uh, for slopes because I didn't want to land on slopes. So that explains why I packed 2000 micros a second just to land on the moon. This is overkill, but yeah. Then we can stage away those fuel tanks in about now. I really thought I would have a bit of extra fuel in the in the base, but I didn't. Staging away, alarm going off, everything going wrong, but then the base miraculously survives and we have landed the first ever Marvin Air and Space Line base on the surface of the moon. And with that, it's also the first surface base I ever put on a celestial body in KSP2. Isn't that nice? And you can see this here on YouTube, so yeah. But let's get the Kerbals out and make a little group photo, like they need to explore. First this tank here still was stuck, I can't get it away, so uh, it just stays there. We can pretend it is like some 
important stuff that needs to be there. A wine barrel, yeah, it's a wine barrel, guys. Like the Kerbos, they, they really like wine and this is a wine barrel there. Anyway, I don't really know why I said this, but now we can set the Kerbos on foot and make a little photo for the people at home. And we are in the newspaper, isn't that cool? And after that, we have to do the most important thing of this mission, which is planting a flag. Here it is, isn't it cool? It's just a KSP flag, but anyway, I mean, I, I really miss the Swiss flag, but hey, I don't want to mod anything into the game. Now, a bit of surface exploration. Here we have a bit of stones and then Valentina gets on this ridge to yeah, look at the base a little and look at Kerbin. And here she is dancing. I hope you liked the video, guys. It's over. I'll see you next time. Maybe when we expand the station. Goodbye.